Thank you. Um, yes, I'm, I'm Lenny Martin, and thank you, DeMarcus. Thank you so much. That was a great message. Um, well, number one, I need love, and I need each of you. Um, I'm basically an introverted person, so it's really hard. See, I want to hold to this, but I'm going to step away. Um, <laughs> because, and I just want anybody that knows me knows that to do something like this is a big deal. But for me, it means so much because Unity Church means so much to me. Um, I have numerous reasons that this is a, a beneficial part of my life. And the first one, of course, is the, the spiritual community. I was tired of feeling alone. And even though I had a, a full family and friends and things, I had something missing. Um, just a spiritual connection with a community of people, it, which is why I can say out loud that I love each of you because you all gather near me. Um, and I just really wanted to feel um, that I could expand my life and not be um, uh, closed spiritually. I wanted to be more expansive, which is also why I'm up here. See, see, I'm up here. <laughs> because I want to be more expansive in this lifetime each day. And when I pray each morning, I ask for guidance on how to be more expansive. Um, and I have a, a partner, Sue. She just couldn't be here today. Her mom's uh, in hospice and, and couldn't come. But I also wanted to feel like that we could come here as a family, the two of us, and then we have a daughter, um, Emma, who now has graduated from um, high school and is in college. But I also, as a mom, knew I needed her to also be somewhere where there was some spiritual connection and community. And I have to say, through Unity, she blossomed with the um, rallies and also with the music experience she plays viola and sings but she needed some you know not to just be competitive at school to have a connection here um, with something and here she is now i went last week um, to nashville and she was in the chamber orchestra at their school and yeah this is like seriously yeah and also is a, a really bright and uh questioning young woman, which is what we all want, and finding her spiritual path. Um, and then personally, I wanted to figure out how, could, how was I supposed to be connected to people I don't really know, and like, you know, in a church and everything. And for me, it was really simple. It was the thing that when they said of the um, share your uh, gifts of time, talent, and treasure. And I was like, oh, okay, what does that mean, you know? But I'll, I'm going to see what I can do because I also, um, I know that old saying that says about participation is the key to harmony. And I wanted to have a more harmonious life of a connection with the community in the city. And the part about the time, well, I got that and the talent. Um, so I thought, well, okay, so now I'm doing the youth group. You know, so that's sometimes you don't see me in here because I like those you tots. I don't know who's the parents, I, don't, I can't recognize anybody, but I love those kids and we have such a great time and it can just hold me with happiness for days because we have such a connection and it feels so good to me. I never would have thought this, I mean, who would have guessed? But hey, I really, really enjoy it and so I do that and it makes me feel connected to children and people here in this community. And then the time part, you know, I decided, okay, I'm going to volunteer in the office a little bit. So I do that, you know, one time a week, and it makes me feel really good and connected. And um, I do attend also the RIU group um, about recovery because it's kind of an expanded um, thought ideas on the 12 steps, basically. And it can be anybody that wants to come with any issue. Um, and it just makes me feel good just to share a little bit and be connected once again. I really... Uh, strove to have this feeling of connection. And then the part about the, um, uh, the treasure. Oh yeah, I kept thinking, well, doubloons? Are they talking about like the pirates' doubloons? You know, it's like it's been my brain, you know, the treasure. And so I would like imagine, you know, well, so I thought, well, how am I gonna get that? And then so I attended um, 
to some book studies here about abundance. And I have to say, I got abundant. And we were able to give and, and donate money to the church and to feel good and happy once again. Um, but I needed that class, I have to say. I needed a little help. You know, there's so many things in our world about um, money and things. So I needed some help, and it was great. I, I went to those classes. Um, and, and I also have gone to other, other uh, book studies here that have really, really helped me. Um, just be connected, uh, find my inner peace, spirituality, um, and I, I have to say some happiness. You know, see, I'll step away a little bit. We'll little, do a little dance, a little happiness. <laughs> and some happiness. Um, and I guess the last thing is, um, for me, I, I've had some major health issues um, the last two years. I'm, I'm walking through the experience of cancer. And, um, but it's been two years, and I'm here. And I needed this group. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, yeah, we'll dance a little more. <laughs> and... Um, Mainly, I just, you know, for me, membership is I have this just tremendous gratitude of having a, a, home, a home. And even though I don't know some of you, you are like my family. So when I say I love each of you and I need each of you, it's in my heart now. And it's wonderful. It's just a really great feeling. And, and I'm honored um, to be a member. And I thank you all. Thank you. Good morning, good morning, Unity of San Antonio. Um, again, my name is Demarcus Simpson, and uh, definitely pleased to be selected to address you all. Uh, so thank you for the opportunity, and I'll just ask beforehand, bear with me. A uh, little, little bit different. Um, well, a little bit about me. Um, I was born and raised in Wichita Falls, Texas. Uh, so the military community is something I'm very familiar with and actually kind of gravitate toward. Um, but after graduating high school, I moved to Austin, Texas, uh, where I attended the University of Texas and promptly flunked out. Um, <laughs> and I began working at Motorola, uh, which is where I met. Okay, thank you very much. Again, any guidance I can get, I'll, I'll appreciate. So, but uh, no, uh, after, um, after, again, uh, flunking out of UT, I uh, began working at Motorola, um, where I met my beautiful wife, Melissa. So uh, I guess my academic failure resulted in a huge relationship win. <laughs> um, Melissa gave me a beautiful, uh, very oh. handsome son, uh, who, for no other reason than lack of my creativity, is named Demarcus as well. Um, and uh, after being impacted by uh, the internet bubble bursting, uh, we re relocated uh, to San Antonio after I was laid off at Charles Schwab. Um, and here in San Antonio, uh, she gifted me with another beautiful child, uh, our precocious daughter, Kiana. Um, we continued to drift through life uh, until one night, um, we were preparing to watch a movie and spend some quality time with one another, and we got a call, a uh, nightmare, um, our niece, was gone. And um, uh, after losing uh, our beautiful Jasmine uh, to suicide, uh, we began contemplating our spirituality. And so uh, Melissa did what we do nowadays. She got on the internet and, you know, put in some things about us, uh, who we were, what we believed, what we were looking for. And uh, we didn't attend any other churches. Uh, when we walked into Unity, uh, we had found um, our spiritual home. And uh, we've attended for about three years now. Uh, we've been members uh, for coming on a year, I believe. And so um, what membership means to me, um, really inclusion. Um, when I, we came into the church, we saw leadership and members of diverse ethnicities, uh, sexual orientations. And as a black man married to a Mexican woman with a couple of caramel kids, <laughs> That was kind of important. Um, I needed to know that how we look would not prevent us from being accepted fully into the church community. Uh, membership is also growth. Um, you know, as we say our affirmations regarding the use of our time, talent, and treasure, I've grown, uh, we've grown um, as a family since joining Unity. Of course, we acknowledge that we can't just pray about it, you know, and expect miracles to fall from the sky. 
um, we have to take action. Uh, but we feel that, you know, by acknowledging our spirituality and finding a spiritual base, uh, it has allowed our family to grow uh, in all facets of our life. And um, since joining Unity, uh, my dad made his transition on New Year's Day of 2017. And I am happy to say uh, that he was alive to witness me find my spirituality. So um, that was something that he was after me for quite some time. Um, and finally, uh, membership means to me acknowledgement. Um, I grew up with hellfire and brimstone. Uh, that was the motivator for me to turn toward Christ. And uh, as Reverend Jimmy has pointed out, um, there appeared to be some conflicting narratives. Um, you know, I wandered through the wilderness for a few decades and I didn't enter the church for, unless it was a funeral or a wedding. Um, but the big thing that resonated with me here at Unity was the acknowledgement of the omniscience and omnipresence of God. Um, where I grew up, it was always said that he was omniscient and omnipresent, but he was still an other, or it was still an other, something that you had to beseech and beg for forgiveness and you were unworthy. And again, that, that just conf was conflicting to me. And so uh, the idea uh, and the teachings of unity acknowledging uh, God is our inner light, uh, that makes sense to me. And so the idea that uh, we're all God's light and can through our actions and decisions allow them to shine brightly or cause them to dim, you know, that's very important to me. And so as a result, I love myself, I love you, I love unity, let your light shine. So first of all, I have a little confession to make. I, I'm Steve Meggs, by the way, the last speaker. We have three main points, and I'm the third main point. So this photograph of me may look a little different to some of you in that it's about 14 years old. <laughs> the, the really sad thing about this photograph is I still have that tie, and I wear it regularly. It's one of my favorite ties. I was thinking as I was sitting there looking at it, I've really got to get a new picture. But, um, <laughs> you know, and listen to Lenny and DeMarcus. Uh, well, I, is anybody else watching the Olympics right now? Olympics? Oh, I can't get enough of the Olympics. I tape every program. I never can watch because every day I end up with about 25 hours of, on my DVR of nothing but Olympics to watch and I can watch about 5% of it. But I really enjoy it. I especially enjoy those sports where people are trying to kill themselves. You know, the, the downhill racing, the ski jumping, and uh, the young kids on the snowboards and the aerial, aerial skiing. Wow. I mean, and these athletes have that language all of their own. You know, they have, they say, like, when something's really, really good, spectacular, it's what? It's rad, really rad. I think that's short for radical. So, so uh, Lenny and DeMarcus, that was rad, really rad. <laughs> well done. And, and when, and I don't know quite what this means. I'm not young enough to know, but they say stoked a lot. And as near as I can tell, Stoke either means they're really excited or terrified. So I am stoked to be with you this morning to talk to you about, about membership. So I wanted to provide a little context for, for my membership journey as well. And I first joined a church when I was very young, uh, 12 years old. And I joined out of a very simple concept called fear. Um, I was in a military family, and we moved around a lot, a lot. And so we were never in one place long enough. And my, my family wasn't really spiritual or religious, but my mom always made sure that she and the five kids got to church wherever we were. And after my dad's tour in Vietnam, we ended up in a place called North Augusta, South Carolina. And mom took us to Emanuel Baptist Church in North Augusta, South Carolina. Now, Emanuel Baptist, as you might think, based on the location and the name, is a member of the Southern Baptist Convention. And our pastor there, Pastor Smith, was your typical Southern Baptist minister. And there was a lot of Satan, fire, and brimstone every Sunday. And Every Sunday at the end of the service, he would give the invitation for people to come down front and accept Jesus as your personal savior. 
And I learned in going to Sunday school and church that the alternative to doing this was to go to hell. And my 12-year-old self did not want to go to hell. So I think there was some peer pressure involved, and you know, I really thought about it and had a couple of false starts, kind of chickened out a couple of times. But finally, I made that long walk down front, and I, I was baptized and became a member of that church. And, you know, I, and I attended for, we moved away for a while and we came back and I continued there. I, I think the last service I attended there was my high school graduation baccalaureate service. So that tells you how long ago it was. It was like 10 years ago. <laughs> and, and in the Baptist church, when you change churches, when you go to another Baptist church, they have something called, you just have to transfer your letter. Everybody heard the letter, your letter. I don't know what that is, but there's a letter you transfer that transfers your membership. So I never did that. I never transferred my letter. And as far as I know, I'm still a member of Emanuel Baptist Church in North Augusta, South Carolina. And I've decided that this unity thing doesn't work out. <laughs> that's kind of my fallback plan. Okay? So that's, and you know, in the interim, between the time I... Uh, um, made that commitment and moved around, joined the Air Force myself. I, I was kind of a, I guess you would call a spirit, spiritual transient. I went to a lot of different churches. Really the, the priority for me at that time was if the, if the church had a good children's program, I had a daughter, so that was how I chose churches based on how good I heard their children's program was. So, um, I, want, I got to wondering, after Bertie asked me this, I said, I wonder why people do join churches. What motivates people? Why do people choose this church over that church? And there was a, I'm kind of a researcher, so I do research on uh, the font of all knowledge, the internet. And I went online, and I found a Pew study, uh, a study done by the Pew Research Center a couple years ago, and it found that there were, there were specific reasons why people join churches. And there, I'll just, there, they had a bunch of them, but the top five, and the first, the primary reason was the quality of the sermons. So no pressure there, Jimmy. <laughs> uh, then there was how welcoming uh, people felt when they went into the church, both by the leadership and the other members. The, another reason was the quality of the children's programs, right? Um, the two other in the top five were, were the location of the church, which kind of makes sense, and also the, the structure of the service, whatever that means. But, but those are the top five things. So I, so I then said, well, I, really, I, I wonder what really motivates people to join a church or a spiritual community. Because, you know, if you look in the Bible, and people much smarter in here about the Bible than me, I think, and will, will attest to this, there's no mention of membership in the Bible, either the New Testament or the Old Testament. It simply wasn't a construct when the Bible was written. You know, they didn't worry about whether or not you belonged to a church or not. It just wasn't one of those things. And so there are probably as many reasons why people join churches as there are people in this sanctuary today. But I would like to just quickly share with you the three things that come to my mind when I think about why I joined Unity. The first was assurance. I needed some assurance that my beliefs and paradigm about faith and spirituality are real. They're not just something that I made up, something that I fabricated myself. They're shared by others, and a lot of smart people have done a lot of thinking about them, and these things are actually substantive, and they work for your life. So I needed that assurance. The, the second reason I joined comes probably from my experience. DeMarcus mentioned his, his experience with the military. Well, me too. I was drawn, I was in the military for almost 30 years and I grew up in the military. And what I learned from being in the military is that experience of community, family, and team. And for me at Unity, I find that. I find that it's a place where I know I'm going to be supported in my spiritual journey, and I'm going to have the opportunity to support others. It's kind of that saying, like, we've got each other's back uh, spiritually. And I really feel that strongly at this church and at the other Unity churches I've attended. And the final part is, um, is, is something 
for me anyway, it's a very simple practicality about spirituality. I can still remember the day that Maggie and I drove up to the Unity Church in Phoenix, and on their sign out front, it has the saying, Unity, the Church of Practical Christianity. Now, I know that doesn't mean a lot to a lot of people, but it means something to me because I could really latch on to that. I, and that, what that said to me is this is a place where I can come and get messages about how I can be a better person, how I can be a better life, and will provide me a framework for thinking about my spirituality and my growth. And so that's, those are the three main reasons why I came to Unity, and, and some of those may speak to you all. I don't know, but th those were the reasons for me. So if you're not a member of our church and you're thinking about becoming a member, we do have some basic prerequisites, and none of them involve getting dunked in a tank of water. <laughs> but what we, what we do ask you to do is we ask you to attend Sunday services for a minimum of three months, and we ask you to uh, attend an orientation class. Uh, we also ask that you uh, take at least one unity education course offered here on our campus. And finally, we ask you to co complete three hours of community service because volunteering is so important to our church. Our church operates based on our volunteers. That's really the underpinning of our church. And so we ask you to experience that, to try that on, if you will, just to see how it fits for you. Um, there are some tangible benefits to being a member. Uh, you get to vote at the annual meeting, like uh, Maggie said. You can, we hope that everyone comes to the annual meeting, but if you're a member, you can actually vote on things. Um, if you like, a prayer chaplain calls you every month and, and offers a prayer with you of support during that time. And it also gives you an opportunity to volunteer for, for leadership functions in the church, uh, like being on the board of trustees or being a prayer chaplain. So those are all tangible, tangible benefits. So I hope these messages that we've given you this morning have given you something to think about, whether you're a member or not, about your place here at Unity of San Antonio. Um, I know that the three of us uh, and any members here today, if you're thinking about membership, will be around after the service and we'll be happy to talk to you and answer any questions that you may have. Thank you very much.